Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911A1 here with the Shade Tree Survivalists. The good old US of A has always been home to entrepreneurs and to inventors and so forth. And that is one of the reasons we are such a great nation. Not that other nations don't have awesome inventors and, and, and people who uh, want to experiment and, and create new things, but in the United States of America, we are unique in the fact that if you don't quit, you don't give up, you can make something of yourself. You just got to understand there are going to be uh, naysayers, there are going to be doubters and so forth. But if you hang in there, you do that deal, you will eventually succeed. That is what the American dream is all about. They're not guaranteeing you success. They're guaranteeing you that if you work hard enough and you just refuse to listen to these idiots who are doubters or naysayers, whatever the case may be, you can succeed. Okay, with that in mind, <clears throat> Kimo has decided that I'm going to start making holsters and so forth. And I was like, why? She said, well, I'm tired of hearing you whining about that damn holster. And you always making stuff like that. You're always making little, I mean, little quick ones out of cardboard or plastic or whatever. She said, why not make one professionally made the way it should be made out of the more modern materials that you can shape and customize to each and every particular application. And the next thing I know, she's got online and she's done some research and a lot of it right here on YouTube on how people manufacture modern Kydex, um, um, carbon fiber, and so forth type sheaths and holsters. And she got so excited about it. And she showed me the different websites where they sold the, the kits that you could buy so you could do this kind of stuff. And I was like, all right, I'm willing to do it if you're willing to spend the money. Now, um, you may or may not know here a couple months ago, she told Walmart to shove their job in her ass. They just absolutely, I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i over road truck driver now. I, I never saw her. Never. She had to work the weekends when I was home. And I told her, I said, that, that's enough of that. I make enough money now. You can tell them to shove that job in her ass if they don't want to work with you. Try to work with them. Try to get days that will be compatible with my time off. That'll be a little bit easier on you. They would not work with her, period. I told her to shove, tell them to shove it in their ass, and because she was depressed, I mean, very depressed. So, anyway, it's been several months ago, and she had got her four hundred one k out. It's just sitting in the damn bank. She was thinking about paying off her building completely and all, but she was still depressed because I still I'm not home very often. And this is this was her pushing me. Okay, it's not like I don't have the drive to do it. It's not like I don't have the uh, basic skills and knowledge to understand how to do it. But I didn't have, I just didn't see spending that kind of money because this is not cheap stuff, folks. Um, so, anywho, let me uh, get behind the camera and I'll show you guys this. Okay, folks, I think the best thing to do would be to start out with the the tool you have to have to cut your holes and so forth and to put your rivets in this is the press that they sell and they've got the little tool the different tools for the different size uh eyelets and rivets and so forth that you need so that was one of the uh, tools that she purchased the second thing you'll need of course will be um you'll have to have some way of heating it up and every <laughs> Every one of these guys using a friggin' toaster oven. I'm like, are you kidding me? I figured it'd be some specialized oven, but there it is. It takes, once you preheat the oven, it takes about two minutes to heat the Kydex up, depending on if you're using the really thick stuff or really thin stuff. <clears throat> but it takes about two minutes to get it where it's just doughy and floppity and it'll move around real easy. So that's that. And then down at the very end, we have the press. Now, this is a forming press. It, is, it has a, a type of foam inside of it. And let me go over here, and I'll show you guys. Make sure you guys can see this. I 
Okay, you can see the impression that the sheath for the uh, the Ontario Combat Knife is still in the, the there, and then on this side, it's quite a bit distorted. But this is where the uh, cowling, of where I fitted the cowling to the to the holster, the sock holster. And this is the big press. And when you do it, they say use this damn chain. Screw that damn chain. Take some of these fast clamps and you can tighten them up really, really, really super tight. Got some of those. So that's, this is how you form it. The oven's how you heat it up so it can be formed. And either before or after, you can go ahead and cut your holes and so forth just depending on the, the application. Now, I'm still learning how to do all this. You also need a way, <laughs> and this is Wally. Say hello, Wally. Say hello, Wally. That's Wally, that's one of our cats. Of course, they all wanna get into the video. But you also need a way to cut it out to shape it, the initial shape. And they're using a bandsaw. I don't have a bandsaw, but I do have this baby right here, scroll saw. And it works pretty daggum good, but you got to be damn careful. Because that thing right here cuts your finger off where you can say don't do it, okay? So i got a little scroll saw. Over here, you can really quickly shape it by using a uh, bench grinder. And I use the... Uh, the uh, the wheel on the end there versus the wire wheel. Don't use it. Now I'm going to eventually get one that's got the belt sander and so forth, but that's what I have now. And then, <clears throat> of course, I use a little rotary tool. Most people will call that a Dremel, but that's, not, that's El Cheapo. Okay. And then you need the Kydex. Okay. These are 12 by 24 sheets. And then I've got the other sheets up there let's see maybe this thing will focus the different thicknesses and the last one here is actually between the 28 I, this is a 60 i do believe in this pack and somehow or another when i was messing with it i, I messed up and i didn't get it but I'll, I'll eventually get that up there but it's 0 0.6 0 0.060 is in between the 2.228 and the 0.80 so I've got some to play with, to practice with, to learn. Then I've got some uh, um, letters and punches and tools to work with. The letters that you can put a serial number or a custom name or whatever. We have polishing and sanding uh, so you can clean it up and polish it up and clean up the rough edges. Down below we got hot works if you're handling some of the really thick stuff um, in order to get it molded and so forth they got some gloves and different things to to handle it with this is where the uh, the, the uh, infrared thermometer goes this here is a um, etching and engraving tool then you have a manual hole punch for uh, you know that thing does it really pretty pretty damn quick um, something else they have one that uh, you can punch three to four holes at a time and you can they'll be all perfectly lined up and exact so you don't have to do as much measurement and these are your fasteners your rivets and um, your eyelets and chicago screws and so forth in this particular one and we're going to be working with paracord and uh, straps to secure it for the different types of holsters and sheaths and then, of course, we have machine screws down there and gun stuff at the very bottom. But we have spent a lot of money. So, we've spent a lot of money. Um, I mean, I the, uh, had to, of course, build the bench, which is not as big as I wanted. I want an eight-foot bench. I don't have the room, period. I'm, I'm just out of room. Um... We'll see what happens in the future. We got to move some stuff from this building to her old blue building because uh, that's going to be our storage building. And then her she shop, we're going to move some of the tools I have in here over there so we can do woodworking and so forth over there. But um, that's the great thing about the United States. Now, I haven't sold a damn thing because I'm in the learning stages. 
uh, learning how to do this and once I feel, think I'm proficient enough then I will start making them for so you know scout and fester and lurch and whomever else so that uh, we can field test them in real conditions you know such as everyday carry uh, for Uncle Fester and so forth um, and of course me also but I was so upset with all the manufacturers no one had a holster system that worked well with the Colt combat unit with the TLR 2 light that pissed me the hell off so I will be specializing in 1911 with a rail before it is over with so y'all stay tuned um, because you can buy the um, the uh, thumb release mechanisms and all these different types of straps and so forth depending on what type of release and what type of retention system you want on the holster. So as I learn how to do all of this, I promise you, once I think I'm proficient enough that I can say to you, if you got a 1911 Colt with a rail and you want a holster that actually freaking fits and is durable, we'll sock it to it. Let me show you guys something before I end this dang gun video. I want to, I want to, I think this is important. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the thick stuff. And the plastic's in the freaking way, of course. Why, well, as soon as I turn the freaking camera on. This is how thick it is. You can see in relationship. I mean, it's pretty hard to see with that. <clears throat> well, you can see along this edge here. And then you've got this stuff right here. Okay. Very, very thin. Very easy to manufacture and use. It's very thin. I mean, it's... Uh, this is point two zero two eight. I've got it wrote on there. And then this is the big boy. The point one one eight. Very, very thick. So, just depending on how heavy you want it. Eventually, I'm hoping that we can uh, we can learn how to use it well enough, and we can manufacture you something by God that'll stay there. And the other things we're going to work on, and the other things we're going to be working on is, of course, high-speed, low-drag gear such as uh, mag pouches and uh, for the M14 and the 1911. Those are going to be my specialties um, because I have those tools. Um, both the standard 1911 as well as the um, uh, the uh, the rail rail gun type handguns, and as time goes by, I'll buy some of the um, the blanks, I guess you'd call it, the blue guns or the gray guns that they make that are made for molding this uh, the Kydex and so forth, and maybe even get into carbon fiber. Now, carbon fibers. Um, so it's a different type of plastic. It's a little bit heavier duty. That's what you find when you buy the uh, the Black Hawk products, which, um, like I said in my very first video, if Black Hawk had a carried a Serpa 2 or 3, um, level 3 holster for a Colt Combat unit with a TLR 2 light, I would have bought one in a heartbeat. Um, I really did not think that having the laser on there would be such a pain in the neck to find a holster to fit it, but it has turned out to be a nightmare. If I'd have known ahead of time, I could have, oh, and one more thing, I almost forgot. The other thing I forgot was the heat gun, okay? Um, this thing right here, you can do adjustments with it. You just heat up. The, I mean, if there's an area sticking, you can heat it up. Now, we they make a really inexpensive one. I think it was 30 or 40 or maybe 50 bucks that Kimo found. If I'd have known about this ahead of time with the cowling, I probably would have just purchased one of the $50 heat guns and may have heated it up and stretched it just a little bit so it would have fit. Okay. But it is a hell of a note. You got to go out now. This is not a fifty dollar tool. This Dewalt is a hundred and thirty damn dollars. But it includes a heap of stuff in the kit because this thing's made, you know, for scraping uh, stickers off and all that kind of stuff. It's got all kinds of attachments, which the the inexpensive one had. It had most of these attachments. 
but it didn't have the scrapers and so forth and it didn't have you know the dewalt reputation for perhaps absolute you know wonderful tools um but yeah if it's really tight you just heat it where it's sticking a little bit and it'll expand out and you can wiggle it you know jiggle it and wiggle it and get yourself a little bit of room and it'll slide right in and out a whole lot better but this was another part of the tool we we spent seems to me like kim spent over 600 bucks on all this stuff okay so it's not cheap you're not gonna go out and buy you know to do this is just a, a one off or two off or three off you you know if you're gonna spend this kind of money on all of these freaking tools you damn well better be ready um because I mean, that, that's a lot of money just to make one damn holster, you know. And I told her I didn't want to spend that money to start with. And she said, well, why not make them for other people? And I said, well, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. She said, learn. <laughs> so I got my marching orders, damn it, and we're going to sock it to it. So this this so this so video is going to be pretty long, I, I would imagine, already. But now, now you know, okay? Now, I haven't actually had the opportunity to... Uh, do much work with it yet to learn anything else with it other than the two little ones that i put up on facebook the other day so if you guys have it <clears throat> subscribed uh, oh, or not subscribed but well i guess you know hit like on facebook and found the shade tree survivals then you you are you know in the dark for a while um and i guess before i end this video i really need to go get that damn holster i left it all in the house because kimo's asleep still of course it's early early in the morning uh, just barely daylight so I'll do that and show you guys what I have learned how to do so far all right there ladies and gents there it is I haven't finished it 100% yet but I figured I'd go ahead and do this video because I haven't put up one about anything about the shade tree survival other than the trucking videos which I don't have many viewers for that yet anyway but anywho this is it I've still got to loosen it up. It's dragging a little bit. Um, probably been the most aggravating experience of my adult life, messing with this damn holster. The screws that they've got in there, the little inserts that go into the main part of the holster are bad about pushing in. And uh, you can see it's uh, left a mark right here and right here and that really really pissed me the hell off but it's all right this is my combat firearm okay oh yeah that makes me look real dumbass but that's all right <laughs> used to that too it works all right it's not i'm not here for beauty contest i don't give a damn it is a functional combat firearm i needed a functional freaking holster that would work okay it took a lot of fighting a lot of effort i've got it okay um it's not as pretty as the factory part but it works let me see, a latchet, pull up. Why the hell on camera it always gives me a rash of crap. Um, still got to cut this piece here out and mold it a little better and fold these ends in, but that's that's fine. I'm, I've got to do that today. But I'm going to go ahead and do a video, like I said, because I haven't been on here in a while. But that's what it looks like, okay? Um, it's a piece of Kydex that I got, and I just molded it. This part here, getting these screw holes to line up, that was a big pain in the damn neck, but I got it all squared away. Covers the trigger, so you don't, don't accidentally shoot your damn self, whatever the case may be. So it's gonna work. Okay, still got some learning. To, like I said, I got a lot to learn still. Um, but we're getting there, and that's what matters, okay? All right, it's locked back in. Now, the sheath, the sheath was, I started out 
without really watching any of the videos and I didn't realize the best way to do is to mold it then cut the shape or uh, not even cut the shape first you uh, go ahead and you've got it molded okay you drill a hole in each corner to keep it square then you go back and you measure all your holes to get the distance correct on the top and the bottom and all the way around whatever the case may be then you put your rivets in then you cut out the shape beyond the rivets okay so you can see there's an extra line here all right because these are original lines it was just it, i couldn't get it to tighten up enough with them way down here so i moved them up and now it's He's right, his brain, God bless America. <clears throat> yeah. And it's not even on a belt or anything. It's just upside down. But you can get it right out. Okay. Now this is Camo's K-Bar utility knife. This is not a combat knife. The top edge here is not sharp. Okay. On a combat knife, this here cut the piss out of you get is the bottom blade. Usually it stays sharper because you're not using it nearly as often. But I made this for her because I stole her Kydex sheets <laughs> when I bought this knife for her for mine to put on my rig because she doesn't use it very often. But with all the crap going on in the United States right now, I said, no, we're going to get her in business. Now this is going to be replaced before it's over with, but this is going to hang on her, her strap right here on her gear. Okay. She may never use it. She may never use it. Okay, fine, whatever. But if she needs it, she'll have it. So those are my first two projects. And like I said, I haven't 100% uh, finished this one. But this today is my last day home. Uh, this is one of the things I intend on doing. I'm going to fold those ends in. And I'm going to either probably cut that. And it'll look very similar to the original, which happens to be right here. Okay. There's this cleaner. Look better than mine. whoop the freaking do I'm learning how to do this. But you can see they've got it cut out. Okay. So, and then they've got the ends pulled in real nicely. But they got a $25,000 mold. I don't have that fancy mold, so I'm doing it by hand. It's, like I said, it's not as pretty. Who the hell cares? You know what? It fits with the gun, the light and the gun attack. I mean, combined. The that one didn't fit. Okay. Now, if you were to go out and buy one and it doesn't fit, you buy you one of them cheap heat guns that you can buy at the auto parts store or wherever. Um, you get it started and heated as you push the gun on in. You heat both sides evenly, not too close. You'll just you'll uh, ruin the finish. But just heat it and it'll you can keep sliding it and working it and working it and sliding it and you'll get it to fit. If I'd have known that, maybe I'd have done that. But void your warranty. Okay. So anywho, this video is way too long already. This is Mac Daddy 1911A1 with the Shade Tree Survivalist. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care out there, and I'm going to get started working on these damn holsters. Oh, and one more thing. The little car, 45. The CW45 by car that Uncle Fester gave to me. Uh, well, he didn't give it to me. He sold to me. This is going to be one of my backup guns. This is going to be the next project to manufacture a holster fit because I do not have a holster, period for this little gun and i like it a lot it's not a 1911 by any stretch but it shoots a big damn bullet <laughs> anywho y'all take care thank you very much for watching this is mac daddy 1911 a1 on behalf of myself and all the other folks at the shade tree survivalists let's pray for our country folks because god bless america our leaders need all the help they can get because every last one of them are freaking idiots Y'all take care. Thank you very much for watching.